What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today we're going to talk about the Spiritborn, the class, the new class in Diablo 4, Vessel of Hatred, that's coming out coming out with Vessel of Hatred. A lot of people have been talking about this. A lot of people have videos on this. The content creators got to play this early. There's obviously no competing with that. And I do appreciate that. I love them. I love Riker. I love DM. You know, they're my two favorite Diablo content creators. Mr. Llama, I love him too for keeping Diablo 2 alive and doing that. Shout out to those guys. Love those guys. I'm so glad that they got, get to cover Diablo and have the Diablo content. But the gaming industry is so big. We all have our voices. So leave a comment below. Let me know what your voice is. I want to hear from everybody. Not just, you know, people who have big platforms. And DM didn't always have a platform, right? He worked really hard and grinded really hard to get where he is. So it's not easy making these videos. It's not easy get, getting to that point. But I like to hear from everybody. I like to get my views out there as well. So I'm going to talk about everything I like about the Spirit Born in this video. We're going to have some positivity, as Griffin Gaming would like to say, some positivity and happiness today. OK, this may be controversial, but what I like the most is that they are creating a new plane of existence for the Diablo franchise itself. So you have heaven, you have hell, you have sanctuary. What else could you do, right? So they had to really think about this. They need some kind of new realm to add some kind of new excitement, to add new lore to explore, you know? And we kind of see that with Star Wars. There's only so much lore you can explore in certain areas of a franchise. And if you don't do it right, it could end up very, very, very badly. So I'm glad that they took their time with this. I'm glad that they did it right. I'm glad that they added the they added the backstory and they understand that it's a retcon. They're not trying to cover it up. They're basically saying, hey, Akarat did this because there wasn't much lore written about Akarat. So we could have Akarat, you know, discover the spirit, discover the spirit realm. Which is a product of, you know, humanity, you know, when they transfer transformed from Nephilim to, to humans and became humans. Right. That kind of thing. So I appreciate that. So I do like the spirit realm. I do like where they're going with that because in the spirit realm, they could create multiple new stories in the future. In an expansion or a season, we could go into the spirit realm. In Diablo 5, the spirit realm could be an act. In Diablo 5, we could have spirit realm bosses. You see what I'm saying here? You, you got to think into the future. The future of the spirit realm is unlimited because there's no established lore for that. So that gives creators a new, fresh perspective to go forward with the lore and create and compelling storylines. And that's good because we love on We love, you know, uh, Lilith. We love all of the, uh, all of the sin wars. We love all of the lore that Diablo already has. It has really good lore, which side note, by the way, it does deserve a series. And we saw that fallout can do it right. If you get a good director, like like Jonathan Nolan, you can do something good with uh, Diablo, by the way. And Lilith is hot. OK, let's be honest. Anyways, uh, aside from that, you know. They could create all kinds of new stories, new bosses. We could have new enemies, new elements, all the stuff. With, you know what I'm talking about? It's basically adding a brand new level to the franchise, of course, whole new realm. So that's one of the good things about the spirit born character. They didn't just put a character in and say, oh, this person came from this island. This person was blah, blah, blah. You know, this person was part of the Paladin order, broke off and, you know, was it living in the jungle, or, you know, under the radar, whatever. They created a whole new realm where with all new powers, with a whole backstory and they added lore. It is a retcon, don't get me wrong, but they added the lore in. So I am pretty happy with the spirit realm. I'm happy with the lore behind it, and I'm happy with the, the future aspect of it, the way it, the direction it could go in the future. I know that might be controversial, but that's how I personally feel. I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to lie and say I hate it just to get views or clicks. I will talk about some of the bads in another video, and I did in my initial impressions give some of the bads, but I like that. OK. I like the skill tree from what we've seen so what we've seen so far. I like that the skills have synergies. This brings me back to the Diablo 2 skill tree. I like the skills. The skills have synergies. They they flow well with each other. They they are designed really well. They are grandiose and grandiose in a way that it works. And granted, it pretty much 
Sometimes it looks like a carbon copy of the monk when they're doing certain skills, especially the Jaguar with the, you know, the fisted skills, but it's very fluid and the spirit creatures are grandiose. And by that, I mean, they are big. They do take up a portion of the screen and they do make you feel like you're actually, you know, summoning these creatures to aid you from the spirit realm. It's not some cheesy, you know, uh, thing like they do, like they usually put native American culture in there with spirit realms and stuff. And it's usually really corny, really cheesy, you know, really tongue in cheek stuff, you know, really passe you just summon the eagle, the spirits and, you know, blah, 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 all that good stuff. No, this, they, they completely mixed it up. They have these creatures actually come through the spirit realm. You actually harness the power of them. You get to see the creatures and what they represent and their powers. And most importantly, most of all, most of all, I think the best thing was that they, they added the centipede. Okay. The centipede really carries this. Okay. Let's be honest. The centipede really carries this. Because on a lot of spiritual things, they ignore the insects. They ignore the less cool, cool stuff. But the Diablo, the development team, I'll insert the director's name because I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But the Diablo development team, they recognize that in the spirit realm, there's all sorts of, you know, there's all sorts of creatures you could draw inspiration from. Just like demons in hell. There are all levels of demons, but they're demons in hell that have certain abilities. In the spirit realm, you could draw upon the power of the centipede and you get poison. That is great. I can't tell you how much I love the centipede. That's probably the only reason I'm going to play this class, to be honest. The jaguar is cool. The gorilla is cool. Okay, the eagle is cool, of course. You've got to have an eagle. Eagles are really cool. So a lot of people are probably going to use the eagle for mobility. And, you know, you can mix and match. That's why it's good that you have the synergies. You're not really locked into one play style. You have synergies. And hopefully they add synergies to every single class for the Vessel of Hatred. Hopefully they expand the skill tree and add synergies. That would be one step in the right direction getting to Diablo 2 without having crazy, you know, power creep. So we saw a power creep in Diablo 2, but it tapered out really quickly, right? You had the synergies when, when 1.09 came out or 1.10. I'm old, guys. You saw the synergies gave you a power creep. And then they added the Ubers. But it, it, it didn't make you godly. You still had to get gear, you know. Just because you had synergies, you couldn't just automatically just kill Diablo really quickly anymore. Well, with some classes, you could. And it did boost Hammerdens a lot, by the way. But anyways, anyways, I do like uh, the synergies. I like all of the skills. The fluidity of the skills look good. I didn't notice any glitches, any telegraphing that, that was done improperly. Everything looks done like it should be. The Jaguar attacks look like they should they should look. The centipede attacks look good. Um, I didn't notice anything degrading about the poison. I didn't notice anything wrong with the feather attacks, the wind attacks from the eagle. They did that really well. How the feathers, you know, go around, they come back. They did that very well. The gorilla's attacks, you know, and, and defensive skills, they did everything's fluid, basically. So I like the skills. I do. I like the skills. I like the skill trees so far. Um, I do, I do like the weapon. Okay. This is what I like. I don't like that you are you don't get a shield, okay? Because we have no shield class, which feels kind of empty, right? It's something's missing without a shield class. That part I don't like. Like I said in my other video, from launch, something feels missing at launch. Not because we just, not because we didn't get the Paladin, but because there's no like shield class type of play. And I feel like they they missed this one ball they could have missed is where the shield synergizes with the gorilla because the, the gorilla is defensive and you have a shield and shields could synergize with the gorilla. The gorilla skills more could draw from shield play. So they could add that later. They could add the shield with the gorilla play and have the have the shield in there. Um, now let's talk about what I really do like because this is the positive video. I really like that we we get a staff and we get a glaive, and the staff does have some blocking skills. So that is kind of like you know a shield type of play where you can block. What I like most though is the glaive. I don't like staves because the staves are just passive to me. They don't seem like they're hitting really hard. You know, I, I just, I like having the glaive, the bladed weapon. It's Diablo. We want bladed weapons. We need bladed weapons in Diablo. So I really like that they have the glaive. 
The glaive looks awesome. I love the way it's designed and I'm so glad we get a new two-handed weapon that is not just a staff. If they limited you to just the staff, I would not play this class. If they didn't have a centipede, I would not play this class. If the lore wasn't good and established the spirit realm, I would not play this class. But because everything is good about it, all of those all of those elements combined together with the gameplay, I will play this class. This class is pretty damn cool. It really is. I really, really, really like it. I'm impressed. The presentation was a 10 out of 10, in my opinion. And I, I think that's all there's left to say. Those are all the positive uh, positives I have about it, which are a lot. You know, there, it goes deep. The positivity that I feel about this class goes deep. And I think it will be a big hit. I think a lot of people will play this class and I think it will breed new life into Diablo 4 Vessel of Hatred. That's the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'm on my way to 200. And let me know in the comments. I want to hear from everybody. I want to know what you think. And I want to have a discussion with you. Let me know what you actually think of the class in the comment section. There's no judgment here, obviously. If you hate it, you hate it. If you like it, you like it. That's the video. Thanks for watching.